Okay, uh, I think we can get started. Uh, hello, everyone. I am David Cole, uh, Senior Engineer Manager at SUSE. Okay, I'm a co-owner of a Longhorn project and leading the team to work on Longhorn. We also have uh, many contribution from external to help with Longhorn grow. Okay, so today I will talk about uh, Longhorn briefly, as usual, and deep dive, and also go into the current status and the future plan for Longhorn and finally Q&A, okay? So uh, Longhorn, I believe some of you are already using Longhorn, but I want to overview, uh, do an overview again to let up everybody know more about Longhorn itself. Okay, so the agenda, uh, the first, I will go through the Longhorn high-level view and project and release update, and also then go into the Longhorn details, what Longhorn supports and how Longhorn works and how the Longhorn inside components work exactly, and what's the new V2 data engine we are working on, and of course, IO performance between the V1 and V2 data engine. And lastly, is what's new in 1.6, the latest release we just released in February, and also what's next. Also, uh, Long is a cloud native distributed uh, bar storage system based on Kubernetes. Uh, it's run on Kubernetes as well, so it does not need any external dependency to make you able to run long on Kubernetes. So it's just based on Kubernetes control plan, control pa patterns, and also customer resource. That's it. And he provides highly available persistent volume. So all stuff, uh, including static provision or dynamic provision, or follower standard, nothing different. And the important parts are long modeling is based on snapshot chain. So he's a copy and write, incremental snapshot, this is in cluster. But out of cluster, we also support remote backup. So basically, you can set up a remote backup target and back up your volume, use a different patterns periodically or on-demand backup. And also, we know about uh, users care about how how to handle this asset recovery happen to your volume or even your cluster. So cross-cluster disaster, uh, disaster recovery, we also have a solution for that. We call it DR volume. And about the installation, the long target is not just a very strict area. We want long can run anywhere. So I call it as a platform agnostic installation. So no matter on-prem uh, cloud, or age, we also want to target for that. And we also doing some improvement. I will share more later. And that is the open source owned by CNCF right now incubating. And we try to uh, target to graduation. So really expect for looking for forward to everyone contribute to, to long haul as well. And high level view are uh, some pillars we are focusing on when we develop long haul. The first one is reliability. And we want to make sure the data for uh, crash consistent for the data to respect for data, uh, data integrity. And also multiple layer protection, like I say, in cluster session, out of class backup. In performance, uh, we have a B1 volume right now. And B1 volume based on some, uh, uh, based on uh, iSCSI, SCSI, iSCSI text stack. But we want to do something different for V2. So he will be on NVMe over fabrics, uh, support, uh, spawn, uh, based on the SBDK. I will talk more about V2 letters. And use, use abilities, we want to make long home E to understand, especially you, when you have a Kubernetes concept, you also can quickly understand, use the same pattern to understand long home. So all the behavior we map it to the long home resource is a Kubernetes resource. And installation also provide different ways and one click installation, just that everybody knows. There are many ways to install long home manifest, ham chart, or even from the, uh, some application marketplace. You also can do that. And also in the 160, we verify the different gear up solution to install long home, upgrade long home as well. And UI, we have a very simple UI. And the simple UI pro provide the primary functions when you operate your volumes or even do on-demand on operation. And maintenance, 
The most important part for long haul, we don't want to uh, interrupt user workload. So a spatial, the user doing no upgrade, or even long haul upgrade, or even no maintenance. So we provide a volume upgrade, or even volume migration, or even drain policy for long, when you use a long haul. So to avoid any downtime for your workload. Okay, so this is Peter. We are always following up when developing long haul. Okay, so this is a project update. Right now, adoption is keep growing. And four years ago, we donated uh, uh, long haul to CNCF as a sandbox project. And after two years, it promoted to incubating project. Of course, right now, we are looking forward for the graduation. And right now, around the world, it's over uh, 111 thousand nodes using running long haul. So it means uh, 13, uh, about 13,000 clusters uh, using long haul as a storage providers solutions. And for area, uh, like I say, we won't long haul run anywhere. So right now, long haul can run age. Probably you saw some news about some company use a long haul as a storage solution for their age solution. So age, on-prem, cloud, and this also all, all the area I want to target for the installation part. And for the domain, for the community information, we know some AI stuff, telco, uh, data virtualization, observabilities, etc. They use a the long haul in these areas. Okay. So the and the last one, the next one, I just want to mention long haul not just use it into an end user solution. You also become the uh, critical critical mission component in any uh, service provider solutions as well. So this is type, uh, different type of position for long haul to use the long haul in different area. And collaboration, I want to highlight this one. And last year, I attended the QCon in Europe, Amsterdam. And many people come to the kiosk ask about, does the long haul support Talos? Uh, many people. So in 160, we make it happens and work with the Talos uh, contributor as well. Uh, long right now can run on Talos in us. And also we have an uh, external contributor that have used the uh, OKD uh, for their uh, distro. So long can run on OKD as well. Release update. Uh, the, the latest release is 160. It's a feature release. So there are new features including in two. And Actually, this week, uh, by this week, we will release 161, and I believe he should be a stable one because 160 already over 10,000 nodes installed 160 right now. Okay, and that is the stable release is a 154 and 144. We continue have a patch release for that, and I will I, I probably I can talk about some release cadence. Yeah, release cadence here. An upcoming release, we, we usually have a three months patch release for the stable patch release branch, uh, patch release for the uh, support uh, stable release branch. And also we change the feature release, originally it's the two feature release per year. We want to move forward faster. So right now we change it to three feature release per year to make sure we can bring more innovation to and features to let the user try and feedback so we can uh, pivot quickly. And for upcoming release, uh, yeah, 161 and 155 and 170 will be happen July. Many new feature will be coming to 170. I will share the roadmap letters. Of course, one at by end of this year. This is a long list, but this is overview to let the people, uh, everyone know what the zone home primary functionality capability has. So for Kubernetes precision volume support, we support different type of volume modes, uh, broad volume and file systems. And we, in the past, we also plan to do some third interface for object storage, but right now the priority change, we will revisit letters. And SS mode is a rewrite only and rewrite many. We continue doing that, and we want to do something new for rewrite many HA in 1.7. And CSI protocol, this is very standard. We want to make a dynamic provision, volume work correctly. So provision, attachments, snapshot, clone, expansion, we also doing 
and in the current older versions. And also we are want to do in some volume group stuff in the following features. In volume capabilities, this is an important part to know about of what the capability the volume has. We, we based on simple vision, no matter V1 or V2, and snapshot chain could be on right. You can do a trim, and we have a recurring job to trim the volume automatically, expand the volume, and live upgrade and live migration. So, and IO performance, V1, we still very, uh, one V1 continue have a uh, increased performance, but V1 is based on iSCSI stack. So the, 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 the challenge is there. So we plan to do something in one ad, but for upcoming 1.7, we focus on the V2 because V2 is a new engine based on SBK can quickly bring the benefit of a higher IO performance for low home volume. And of course, local volume and data locality. And storage to topology. In the past, we only support V1 long disk. It's based on file system on host, but V2 is a robot device. So you, you can dedicate a robot device for your volume. And replica scheduling and anti affinity. In the past, long only support no and zone. But uh, from the community feedback, most of people actually have a multiple disk on one node. The one replica can be considered that part as well. And that the replica, more than one can, can schedule on the same node, but different disk. So right now, we also su support the disk replica scheduling anti affinity. Of course, in the future, disk level auto rebalancing will be introduced as well. Right now, it's no level storage tech. And from the ecosystem side, we talk about the volume itself, volume capability, Kubernetes, Kubernetes perceived volume CSI. From the ecosystem part, we have a data protection, data service, and data reduction. And data protection is based on the replication, encryption in, seed, in transit, and arrest, including the remote backup. And bureau protection based on data integrity for the snapshot level, uh, someone asked me uh, at kiosk today. And data service in cluster snapshot revert, out of cluster backup restore, and DR volume. Data redu reduction, because long home is based on snapshot chain. So uh, the space consumption of snapshot matter. And we introduced a few ways to let you can manage well for, uh, for your snapshot. So including a recurring job, you can periodically clean out snapshot to merge your snapshot and also uh, snapshot size and maximum number of snapshot management. Of course, backup compression. This is not all the feature list, of, of course, but I want to, in short time to let you know this is area long already covered. And how long work? Uh, everyone, people come to me ask about what's a long design. Oh, I always say very, I always say very simple, because the design is very straightforward. The first one is a control plan. A control plan is deployed by Dimensei. We call it long manager. It's composed of uh, long controllers. The Kubernetes control very standard and reconciling long customer resource. That's it. And data plans. Actually, we have data plan few components. But the primary uh, function for the data plan is understand some requests from the control plan to see when I need to manage or create volume, when I need to operate like uh, extension, extend, or uh, trim the volumes. You understand, then do the following stuff. So for the volume itself, it's actually three components uh, for it. The first one is a volume front end. Uh, for V1 is iSCSI, for V2 is MVNE over fabric. And volume engine, we call it the entry point for the I.O. Okay, and also here have, he have a control part for the engine. And downstream volume replica is the data placement. So your data will be saved into the replicas. And you can decide how many replica you want. And of course, by default, long home is uh, three replicas, but it really depends on your usage. Some people, or some use case, your application level already have a replication. So you not really rely on the long home to do a double replication, but you want to rely on the long home other capability like a backup snapshot. So you can determine how many replica you want. And the third one, life cycle. The life cycle, I, I don't talk about the step provision, 
but basically it's around, uh, for dynamic provision, it's around the CSI. So all the CSI cycle components functionality, this is what we will want to achieve. Actually, we already support. And trigger point is a PVC. And data placement, like I said, long disk, two type, file system on host and robot device. So uh, the left hand side, uh, right hand side, there's a diagram on our long home documentation page as well. You can quickly understand the page. You can see your, your part, your workload request the volumes. And long will understand that because it's a dynamic provision. And CSI side cards, and we'll call the CSI drivers, we will understand that data plane will create engine. It's an entry point for the volume and downstream replicas for the data placement. And we will understand which disk have a more spice than others, and we will press layer. And if your workload is part one, it's a managed manage workload, for example, deployments or step set, yeah, deployment, and your workload somehow uh, is fail and need to fail overs. And in short time, when your workload bring up uh, another nodes, long will understand to bring out the volume up, but replica is intact, the same. So it can very short time to bring out the IceGuard front end and engine process. So this is how long long home best you work. And like I say, long home manager uh, is a control plan. So what does it really like look like? Um, there's a CSI API is an interface. I call our long home CSI plugin. Long home CSI plugin is run on each node. If you are using a long node for long home, there will be a long home CSI plugin, and he will communicate with the long home manager. Through the API, we have, uh, we have an internal RESTful API for that. So long CSI can communicate with that. And we will save a persistent the customer resource to a, a Kubernetes API server for sure. But important part, we will reconsoling for each uh, resource. Some, some resource is a periodic, periodic re reconsol, but some resource is actually event driven. Depends on the different scenario and create a set of uh, components for the volumes. And the other important part, the interface, the going to the communicate with the long home manager, not just long home CSI plugin, you also long home UI and long home customer resource. You can manage the long home by UI or even modify or create a long home customer resource for that. And replication, uh, like I briefly uh, explained a little bit, yeah, you can request the parts, have a volume request, and no one will determine to create an engine next to your workload on the same nodes and communicate with the replicas on this node or even the other nodes. And we have a configuration called data locality, so he will try to make the one of replica next to your workload have a better, better performance. And of course, we, all, we also have a replica balancing. So if your workload somehow move, and we will try to balance to make the replica next to your workload as well. Okay, this is set patterns. And the node down, there's a new, new parts running on another node and can create the engine connect to the easy replicas. But how about replica, number of replicas? Original is two replicas, right now it's one replica. No Hong is, uh, has uh, one mechanism called stale time out. So he can be configured prevailing or globally and you will know, okay, I will not bring up the replica until it's a real thing happens. Otherwise, um, probably the node will be come back because it's maintenance, no maintenance. So you will come back, we will not spend extra effort to rebuild the rebuild replicas. But if you over the stale timeout, we will rebuild it. And also some real scenario is not, it's about the involuntary, involuntary uh, no reboot. Okay, Marlin snapshot, uh, like I say, he's a snapshot chain, uh, copy on right. So in, initially there's the empty volume heads, the data will compete, continue uh, right into. And secondly, if you uh, have a snapshot trigger by users or system snapshot, when we do it in a backup, there will be automatic create a system snapshot and the new volume head will be created. And the previous snapshot will become immutable and they just for read purpose and continue for that. And the real data you see, the volume content will be that one, the right-hand side, 
but it's actually combined with the, all the multiple uh, snapshots together. And snapshots, actually, if you are data-intensive data, the, the, volume, the volume difference will, be, will change frequently. So it probably will be occupy more space than you expect. So long have, uh, like I said before, space, snapshot space uh, management, you can use the recurring job to trim or even uh, merge, delete uh, snapshot to merge your snapshot to reduce the space consumption. And the mechanism is based on sparse file for V1. But V2, SBDK, there is the logical volume to support that as well. And backup, backup is based on the, the, the snapshot, but we use the reference count to make sure there's no not used data still backup on the remote backup targets. So you will see, for example, in these pictures, we back up the snapshot two and snapshot three. So you will not see uh, the snapshot, uh, the, the, you, only, you only have uh, some reference. There, was, there, will, there will be no duplicate data for that. There will be reference count to understand, okay, this backup is reference to which block of data. And the, that snapshot, snapshot two is reference to that one. So there's no duplicate data for that. Okay, RAPI rebuilding is also very uh, important uh, for long haul because sometimes you will know will be done for some reasons, uh, a special involuntary reason. So how long can make sure the number of replica available your volume? Because this is the purpose and uh, the design for long haul volume. So firstly, we will post the engine, the front end. So the IO will be stopped a little bit but we will take the snapshot immediately. The snapshot is very quick because it will just make the first volume hat become the, the first snapshot, then create a new volume hat. Then add the new replica card in the rewrite only mode and unpost the engine, then sync the snapshot to the new, new set of, the, uh, new, new set of uh, uh, replica cards. And set the new replica rewrite, rewrite okay? So this is for post first, create a new snapshot and create a new replica, only live data. But right now we can support write, not read for that. So the data can be continued for that. So continue for that, for write, but you only can read from the easy replica. But at the same time, we will sync snapshot because snapshot is immutable. We sync into and mark the new replica with the rewrite. Uh, so the old I.O. can go into the both uh, replicas. So this is replica rebuilding. And live upgrades. Every time when you upgrade long home, your volume is still running, still serving for your workload. But actually, the engine process and replica process already be upgraded and concurrently and sequentially to make sure every engine, every volume will be have a new engine process and the new replica process. So what we are doing is more like a blue green deployment. We will prepare another set of uh, engine and replica process, but actually data is no movement. The re replica is point to the same data. And later, if engine and replica process get ready, we will point to the new engines and tear down the old uh, engine and replica set. So for the I.O., it's always continuous, nothing changed. Long disaster recovery, this is DR volume. A special, uh, if you are planning to have a standby cluster for your, your current cluster. So you can make a backup for your volume to a central middleware uh, backup target, backup store. We support different type of backup store, S3, NFS, CIFS. Um, some users use a uh, GCP stuff and as yours. So because the four main, what we said is all the same, the, the only difference is the place and destination. So when you set up a backup target, backup store, you can back up your volume periodically to the remote backup. But their volume is different. Their volume, when you back up, he will immediately restore, delta restore to the, 
standby cluster. Even you are not activate leveling on that standby cluster. So when your cluster, for example, like a Kubernetes cluster in region eight has some problem, disaster happens. So you can in a short time to bring up the cluster B back and activate the DR volume, become the normal volumes. So this is DR volume purpose. Okay, we already talked about uh, the different design, the, the, the patterns Long Hong has and behaviors. So what does the Long Hong, the inside component really work? Okay, this is the, the diagram I can share with you. So Long Major demon set, like I say, and the data plane, we call it instance manager. So when you deploy Long Hong, you will see an instance manager for that. And here I, I specify the V1 and V2 because uh, in one file, we introduce the V2 data, uh, data engine as a preview features. At that time, we make the one instant major to serve two type of, uh, two type of data engine. However, there will be cause some problems because V2 data engine based on SBDK need higher resource consumption, a special dedicated CPU for that, okay? and higher, uh, bigger, huge page, page memory for that as well. Then, and we realize when people use a V1, probably their environment is different, probably home lab or age, and they does not really care about the high performance uh, IO. They really care about the, to make sure we have a precision volume support for that scenario. So in 1.6, we introduce, we separate the instance managers. So when you install 1.6, by default, he will enable the V1, but you can disable V1 in enable V2 exclusively. Of course, if you have a better resource set up, and you can enable both. So we want to make it independent without any dependency in between. So this is the purpose, okay? so. When, like I say in the previous page, the interface will become, come to the CSI driver or, or long home CR customer resource and go into a long home managers, you will communicate with the V1 instant managers. I did not describe the detail in the instant manager, but there are a lot of gRPC servers inside respond for different capabilities. So V1 instant manager will be create for V1, for V1, you will create the front end ISCAS target servers, and V1 engine, and V1 replica, local replica or remote replicas. The same for V2. We use the same design concept uh, for V2. The primary reason for that, we want the users can quickly understand all the design for different type of data engine. Because when you use the V2 data engine, you can think, okay, the same way, the same flow as the V1. So, V2, he will bring out the NVMe over fabric target servers, SBK Ray1, BDEF, and logical volume, logical replicas, local and remotes. And when everything get ready, he will be available for your workload to consume. And share managers, share managers respond, respond for rewrite many, just one step difference. Uh, for when we reg recognize our uh, last uh, volume request for rewrite managed, long manager will understand and create a share manager part. And share manager part will use the long home volume created by instant manager and mount into the share manager part and provide the NFS export endpoint to the consumer workload. So this is most of the case user want to use a long home, a special multiple workload want to use the same volume. And probably you think of this diagram, you're thinking, well, it's a single point of failure, right? They're share managers. So in one file, we introduce a recover backend for share manager. So when he fail over, can be recovered quickly in short time. But eventually the HA is the target goal. So in one seven, we are doing some evaluation for share manager HA. So this is purpose uh, to make it uh, eventually HA. Back image manager. Uh, this is new stuff. Um, because long haul not just useful uh, application level workloads, and you also provide a broad volume, volume type. Okay? So some solution integrate long haul as the broad volume because that kind of application is actually VN. 
And VN do want to use a long home because long have a backing image concept. And that means your violin can be bring up not just empty raw violin. You can based on the raw image or QCOW2. And we will bring up your volume with, with the data set into the image. So the difference here, only two parts. When we know, OK, your storage class defined the volume should be from the back image. No one know that. No one will bring up the, we call it back image data source. Uh, the source def defined, we want to support, is, uh, in the future, support different source. But right now, it's HTTP. Uh, so it's, it can get the back image from the remote, uh, remote, uh, remote uh, source. And down into the backing image data source component will be delete. It's just uh, volatile, on purpose, uh, on demand part uh, for downloading back image. Okay? Then it will be handed over to back image manager to respond for the back image distribution and the replication across node, across the disk. Because back image will be used by replicas, OK? So this is a point. OK, uh, V2 data engine. What's the V2 data engine? Uh, simply say, it's based on SPDK. We call it the second, the next generation of long home modeling. But it does not mean we will duplicate the V1. Because we will keep the V1, continue improving the V1 performance. Like I said before, different environment setup, low spec, high spec, they will determine what the data engine you want to use. Okay? Uh, he's, he has a broad device concept. You have a different broad device defined, different function to represent the final broad device uh, for workloads. Okay? So the most important, the protocol uses MBME over Fabrics. Uh, this is very, very important for us to provide a higher performance for our uh, V2 volumes. Okay, the similarity parts for V1 and V2, replicas, logical volume for V2, snapshot space file for V1, block cluster, block, store, uh, block for V2, and sparse file extension, extend for V1. And back end, Ray, Ray 1, uh, BDF, and engine process, and MVME over fabric for V2, and iSCSI for V1. And cross node replica connection, uh, engine to uh, connection, connect to the remote replicas can through the MVME over fabric, but V1 is home at the TCP protocol uh, we're doing. And this is just show, quickly showcase the difference. The important part is the context switch between the kernel space and user space. So the right hand side is a V2. So it will be higher efficient because low context switch for that. And also it's based on MVA over fabric. Okay, this what I say, V1 IceGuard C. Um, we use the IceGuard initiator of a, of a client and IceGuard target will be bring up together with a long home engine and replica is a home solution. And for V2, uh, MLV CLI, right now it's CLI, but we are planning to do a static binding, um, probably not in 1.7, but eventually in 1.8. We want to do that because we want to decouple from the MBNE CLI. And engine is MBNE over fabric target server together with the long engine. The same concept, the replica will be logical uh, volume. And our performance, this is the important part. So the red, red bar is the V2, the yellow bar is the V1, the blue bar is the local disk. You can quickly see, understand the difference gap here and bring, V2 bring high performance uh, than V1. And throughput, because long is a multiple replicas, you will see the read uh, case is higher than others also have an improvement than V1. Uh, re random write, because we, we reach out a, a capability capacity of the uh, underlying disk in our test in, in on our test bag. Let us see. Again, you see the V1, the high latency, but V2 is low, low latency uh, than V1. So this is very important. V2 define a different position uh, to use case when you want to have a higher performance for your workload. Okay, uh, quickly, uh, because no time. So, one six zero. Uh, if you not try yet, 
uh, give it a try and give us feedback. One six zero, what we have right now, we have a volume snapshot, Vega Rebirth for V2, and Vega Restore for V2. But Vega Restore is uh, very interesting. We not just back up V2 volume and restore back up volume. You can back up V2 volume, restore to V1 volume. You can back, you can back up the V1 volume, restore to V2 volume. So this is purpose you want to make lamp seamless integrate. Depends on your different scenario use case. And separate the data plane for V1, V2, and ARM64. We make sure uh, we just try it and make it happen in 160. You can run the MCC4 for, uh, for V2 data engine. Uh, Preferred agnostic, I already mentioned. Talos LKD, space efficiency. You can manage how many snatcher you want, how many size of snatcher uh, usage you need. So in 160, we have a configuration for like global configuration or even volume space configuration. Bar volume encryption, encryption. We, have, we already have a file system volume encryption. Providing encryption is very beneficial for your workload is the uh, virtual machine. Okay, no drain. Uh, this is all very, very important for your, for your no maintenance because when you have less healthy replicas, nothing you can do before. But right now we, we introduce a broad eviction. It will automatically evict your replica for you. And we also back, back pull this feature to, uh, to one file. Okay, back image, back out, restore, already coming into 160. What's next? Uh, this next page. So 161, we will release by this week. So uh, give it a try. It should be uh, the first uh, stable release of 16. And 170, what we want to do is a feature parity for the V1 data engine in V2. Live upgrade, migration, replica rebuilding on light, back image volumes, trim expansion, and volume group. Uh, snapshot already have a volume group of snapshot we want to integrate, but we also think about restore as well. And rewrite many HA experimental. So this is what we want to plan to do uh, to, in the upcoming feature release in July. So uh, please look in for, for it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I, we long has a kiosk. So if you have any question, you can come to ask me. I will be at kiosk uh, next two days. Okay, thank you.